Good morning, everyone. I'm Christine Hart and we are with Actors Entertainment. We are live and we have the beautiful Darren Warren, actress, director, and writer of, in my opinion, one of the best books to come on the market since Michael Shirtliff's audition, How to Make Your Audience Fall in Love with You. Good morning, Darren. How are you? Good morning. Thank you. That was a really nice introduction. Well, Thank it's you. well deserved. I read everything that comes on the market, and I have to say, this is probably the most relevant uh, that I have truly read in, in 20 years. And what made you decide to write this book? Well, I've been teaching a class in LA for about 25 years, and I had so much to say. And Michael Shirtleff actually was a friend of mine, was a friend of mine, and he suggested I write it and I did and he helped me by writing a chapter and reading it and cri criticizing it quite a bit he and was helping tough. yes he was very tough and he was a fabulous teacher so I hope everyone reads has read audition and then we'll read mine which now how to make your audience falls, fall in love with you it really deals so much with acting techniques um, as well as the nuts and bolts of auditioning and actually getting the job, but I think a lot of actors really miss what makes auditions interesting and believable. First of all, could you tell us the difference between stage acting and film acting, if there is a difference? Okay, I love that question, because there is no difference at all. Okay, people think that stage, I mean, that stage acting is, hello, everybody, and, <laughs> you know, going to the back and being a little fake, and that film acting is really way down here. But I gotta tell you, actors out there, that this is really boring. And what we do, look, you and I are talking loudly with energy, I'm sitting up, and that's how film acting should be too. And the big stars, they have their natural energy and you don't take it down like that. And it's interesting, you talk about tight stomach muscles. If your stomach muscles aren't tight, you're dead. What that's do you mean right. by that? Well, what I mean is, if you really care to change your partner and you really care about what you're doing and what, how, and what you're fighting for, you're not gonna sit back like this and go, uh, would you mind, um, you know, uh, not fighting with me. Would you mind picking up your clothes? You're not going to talk like that. You're going to say, would you please pick up your clothes? I'm sick of it. And your, and your stomach muscles are up like this, right? Well, you want to so, make it, you want to make it interesting. Yes. Okay. So what are you fighting for? You've got a scene and what are you fighting for? How do you make that interesting choice? Okay. Always raise the stakes. For example, I have, I have this example in my book, which you have read so beautifully. You're the most wonderful person. Um, if, if, for example, you're having a little scene and you're on next door, next, next to someone who's exercising, and most actors will say, okay, I'm just picking her up. Okay, that's a pretty obvious choice. Why not raise the stakes and say, if I don't pick this woman up, I'm so lonely, I'm gonna kill myself. I'm gay, I'm trying to be straight, and I'm going you know, a huge, bigger than life choice. L regular life, I say- Life threatening. If, yes, I say if you're like, um, at, at listening at a dinner party to the conversation next door, after a while your attention will wander. It's not usually, unless they're breaking up, in which case you really wanna hear it, um, <laughs> or you know they're admitting something or something but mm -hmm. anyway mostly it's real life is not that fascinating we have to raise the stakes well you want to watch someone so you talk about things like cell phone incidents the first the last line um, when you raise the stakes right give okay. us examples well, of that well all right actors come in i i actually audition actors for my class and uh, I use the same scene, men, women, it's two soldiers, and the, I'm the uh, soldier who's going to kill their friend. So their first line is, what are you going to do with him? Now, if you have 20 actors coming in just asking a question, what are you going to do with him? That's pretty boring. So you make a choice of an action. What are you going to do to your superior? Okay, you make a choice of, I'm going to show you, you can't get away with this. And so instead of going, what will you do with him? You go, what will you do with him? You better watch out. You see, it's a much more interesting thing. And then all the people in the rooms go, 
oh, there's an actor. Now, you gave a specific example that I thought was fantastic. Uh, you spoke of auditioning just a, a sea of actors uh, for, for a part, and you got a note from someone that said, oh, yeah. I am not right for this, but can I come in anyway? Please tell us about that, because you said he was hands down the best you saw. Okay, this was funny. This was in the days when I was doing my own casting, and it was for a middle-aged German man, and a young African-American actor said, may I audition? Well, I'm a nice person, and I thought that was enterprising of him, so sure, come on. So he came in, and I just was going to let him be in front of, uh, actually it was a play Michael Shirtliff had written years ago, and so I was just going to let him be there, and he was so fabulous. He was just so interesting, funny, odd, quirky, that Michael rewrote the part for him. And that's how I want all my actors to be. And in my class, I have actors that are so good and so different that I have uh, directors calling me and saying, who do you have? Because they know that my actors are going to make them look good. So what did this young man do when he came into the room? What what did he do that set him apart immediately from the others? He had the most energy. He had the most humor. And I, can we talk about humor now? This is something... Specifically with the humor, you actually said even in tragic scenes, it isn't really just about the tragedy. It's the humor that makes it all the more heartbreaking. Yes. And that's why I insist in every single scene that you all do out there that you have humor. Now, do I mean funny ha-ha humor? I do not. I mean that humor and little laughs are the social grease of, of acting. So, for example, if you're absolutely terrified, like you're going to go down a ski slope and you go, oh, ha, <laughs> like that. You know, it's not funny or, you know, like, for example, in... in um, a scene where someone's dying. You go, <laughs> she was such a good person. And you kind of laugh. It's Laughing is not for humor. It laughing isn't. is for... It's for relief. Relief of tension. And it's very human. And every scene should have a laugh. In this scene that I'm talking about that I auditioned my students with, there's lines... I mean, he's really terrified that this person is going to uh, kill his buddy. But he goes, oh, you're not really serious, are you? Like that, just a little bit, you know, of, of release of tension it is. So always have that. Now, you talk about different techniques for, for laughing, for crying, for different emotions. And I know that's something that a lot of actors stumble on, and it can appear ridiculous if you don't have a technique. Oh, tell us about okay. It. My, I have students tell me when they are on a set, you saved my life, I had to. There's a famous story about Sophia Loren. She did this brilliant take with sobbing and crying and all this. And then at the end, they said, oops, something went hap happened with the camera, and please do it all again, and she couldn't. And uh -oh. so, yeah, because you know why? She, she was wonderful, but she didn't have the technique of crying. So I teach a technique of crying and laughing, and it's actually uh, breath control. The first thing you have to know when you're crying is that you do not have to produce real tears. Um, that just gives you such a relief just to know that. And we have glycerin for that yes. if need be. Thank you, exactly. And most actors can produce real tears. That's one thing actually I can do. But um, I can do that too, and I can do it a hundred times. But, but not everybody can. Not everyone no. can. But Darren, let me tell you something. If you would kill a fresh person, you actually could. And that <laughs> is a technique that we're going to get back to in just a moment because... Hands down, you have combined all of the best techniques from so many different of the greats, in my opinion, uh, that I think everyone could really get a fresh take on how to make things more interesting. I'm Christine Hart, and we are back with Darren Warren, who wrote the book, How to Make Your Audience Fall in Love with You. And where we left off was the techniques of emotion how do you cry on cue? How do you laugh? 
And Darren, how do you do that believably? Okay, well, I'm just going to teach you the technique because what happens if you have a technique, then you're up here. You don't fall below a certain level. So if you have this technique, then you can soar and then you can, um, in other words, if you have the technique, then your emotions can arise out of that. But here it is. Okay, so laughing, and you men dry up all the time. Uh, you, you laugh like all this. All the time. <laughs> if you have to laugh a lot, a lot, a lot. So what that is, is just a breath thing. It's ha, 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 and then you feed it with more um, air. So the laughing technique is this. <laughs> like that and you keep feeding it with air but so don't <laughs> end up like that don't. women don't do that you men do that I don't know what's wrong with you but anyway you but do it goes that. back to the energy you were talking it about is. and it's feeding it and going ha 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 now crying is something different crying is inner so say for example that I am at a funeral all right it's like and I'm trying not to cry it's like in and your mouth can, uh, can turn down whatever you have to practice in the mirror what works for you what is look at yourself crying and my mouth turns down like that and then just hold it hold it in hold your um like. on that note darren you talk about how people just burst into tears oh yes and so no then that's really the same that's the that. same as the that's the same as the laughing it's like sobbing <laughs> like that and then actors don't hide your faces i call it naked faces we in real life hide when we cry we <laughs> like that do not do that naked not faces yeah naked faces now so. as far as believability uh, we don't just burst into tears. We often hold back the tears, and you speak of that yes. in the book. Yes. All right. So, if you want your audience to cry, which is a huge compliment, what I want you to do is to hold back your tears, and the audience will cry the tears for you. If you're sobbing, the audience will feel sorry for you, but they won't have that prickle in their eyes. They won't feel your pain. So, I gave an example in the book of um, my student who had to, he had allowed his grandchild to go into the ocean and she was in a coma and he's singing to her. Now, he was singing to her and so instead of crying over it, he was trying to be really brave and singing and everybody was in tears because he was holding back the tears and you could see them and he was holding it back so they cried for him. And you allow your audience to feel exactly. that pain exactly. rather than and just handing it to them. Then they'll give you the compliment of, of crying. Yeah. Now, you talk about something that always makes me howl with laughter because I see it all the time. Putting molasses all over your work. What do you mean by that? Okay, that means that you put a drunk molasses. You put a tired molasses. Over, for example, supposing the scene starts with, I'm so tired, and so then you do <laughs> the scene, this. you do the scene tired, and no one wants to watch a tired actor. We want to watch someone who is exciting. So instead of saying, I'm so tired, which is a boring choice, you, go, you make a game out of it. You say, ah, I am so tired, ah, like that. <laughs> and then you don't do the scene tired. We, we can be tired, and we can not be exhausted looking. No one wants to watch an exhausted actor. You can be tired and you can be really on 10. Exactly. And the same thing with drunk. Drunk people shouldn't give in to the drunk and put drunk all over your thing. You should fight the drunk and get really sober, you know, and really work at getting sober. And then one of the examples I have in the book is, I don't know how many of you have seen The Green Mile, where the fabulous Heartbreaking. guy is discussing his last meal. And actors who put sad molasses would go, well, I guess I'll have this, and I guess I'll have mashed potatoes and gravy. And, and so what he did was, because he didn't put sad molasses, I'm going to die, he thought, oh, I'll have uh, 
And he was excited about the menu. He was actually thrilled about yes. the menu. And yes. you broke that down into beats into your book. And I was amazed at how you took each and every line, I'm going to have this to eat and that to eat. And he made it sound like it was, it was a party for him. And that in itself was, yes, was exactly. heart-wrenching. Yes. So the, the point is to have choices that make you look attractive and not weary. Weary is the worst choice an actor can make. Weary is weary. Weary is weary. No one wants to see a weary person. No one no. wants to see a bored person. No one, if you say I'm so, you're so boring, don't be bored. I don't act bored. Just, you know, get mad at them for being boring, but don't you be boring. And um, for him, it was, he was thrilled with each separate item on the menu. And that that broke our hearts, yeah. Now, you talk about beats, you talk about punctuation. What is it to take a beat and to use punctuation to change the scene? How do you use this to your advantage as an actor? Okay, so you actors might have a line like, well, I don't know, well, I don't know, maybe I'll let you do it, maybe to a kid or something. Mm -hmm. So if you go, well, I don't know, maybe I'll let you do it, and 20 actors do that, and then my student comes in and goes, plays a game with the line and separates each, every new, what is it I say? Uh, every new uh, uh, punctuation mark is a new opportunity to audition. So what you would say is, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll let you do it. You see, it's just like stretching it out. And then when you're auditioning, they'll say, oh, that actor can act. I like that. Yeah. It's a lot like you say, stage directions should largely be ignored. Yes, stage directions should be ignored because usually um, they are from an another performance, especially in theater. Um, ignore them if they say sigh. Ignore them if they say walk over there. Um, ignore them if, if they're not good and raise the stakes. Well, if you don't raise the stakes, basically you have a dead performance. Exactly. And we're back. We've got Darren Warren, again, the author of How to Make Your Audiences Fall in Love with You. All right, we left off on um, game playing in scenes. Now, do you have examples for game playing? Is it raising the stakes? Is it changing things around? You talk about killing a fresh person. Is that part of your game playing? <laughs> no, killing a fresh person is... Uh, you know when you have to get really upset about something or somebody dies in the scene. Um, what I suggest, now method actors go back to maybe their father died 20 years ago and they access that pain. To me, I think people have already dealt with that pain and so I make a joke and I say kill a fresh person. So, um, you know, you're children, uh, your, um, you know, plan their funerals. That raises I mean, the stakes, Darren, quite <laughs> a bit. It really works. It really works. It's very bad. But uh. Now, you talk about mistakes people make in acting. What mistakes are, are those? Oh, that's a really fun thing to make a different choice. And honestly, if you're auditioning, different choices are what get you actors jobs. Um, you have 20 people come in, auditioning is really boring to watch. You make a different line, you make a different choice, and the auditors sit up and they give you the job. So a mistake can be, for example, supposing you're my mother-in-law and you move your leg a lot and it's so irritating and so I've put up with it for years and then suddenly I say, don't move your leg anymore. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So it makes the scene go up in, waves like this and that's how scenes should go like a crazy heart monitor right and so that's also making choices so it's it's an injection of energy yes. and especially in auditioning it's what's going to get yes get someone to take notice and set yes. you apart from for, the rest of the for example the actors. that scene that i audition actors with it's a, sub, a subordinate officer talking to me and he at one point gets angry well chicken actors, which a lot of you are <laughs> without energy, what you will do is you'll say, you won't risk and make that mistake. So you'll say, God damn it, you're really upsetting me. Instead of really going far, making a mistake with your superior officer and then apologizing. 
So go far with the goddammit line. So you basically say if you don't risk, you don't work. That's right. So a lot of actors are afraid to risk everything, and you say that risking everything is the only way to go. Well, risking making exciting choices, using a lot of energy, and that is the most important thing. Energy is sexy. Energy is exciting. Energy is, all the stars have energy. People say that they come into a room, Bill Clinton has energy. They, they, they just take attention because of their energy. So don't play it safe and don't talk like this on film or on the, when I, pay, I audition actors, they often talk like this. But you say that that is boring. Yeah, you know, it's so just a boring. conversation of every day. That yeah. is not something somebody wants to pay fifteen dollars to see. Exactly. In, in exactly, a movie it's theater. raising the stakes. Yeah. Well, raising the stakes is everything. But when it, when someone tells you to take it down, what does that oh, mean? Okay, for you actors, if a casting director tells you to take it down, first of all, they're not a good casting director, <laughs> and secondly, what you're going to do is you're going to die and you're gonna become really small and you're gonna think you've overacted. And you haven't. You've just maybe not been vulnerable enough or maybe you have talked a little too loudly for the space. So just do those two things. Do not jettison your entire performance. Otherwise, you're gonna be so boring. So those are wrong words. So protect yourselves and know, and know just to get vulnerable, that's it. And lower your volume, that's it. So, an actor enters the room. This is, this is the audition. What should he do or not do? Okay, a lot of you actors go in and you're not ready with your first line and you don't know what you're fighting for. So you come in and you go and you take a minute and you turn around and we auditors are sitting there, oh gosh. Who has time for that? Who has time for that? So what I want you to do is walk in, briefly talk to them as much as they want to talk to you, um, and start. And do not prepare, and do not sigh. Do not go, I don't want your energy out, I want it up. I want you prepared to assault <laughs> your partner. So you're saying, the moment you get in that room, you should be ready. You should have done yes. anything that you need to have done yes. before on your way in the yes. bathroom, what and have you. don't sigh. Now, if you aren't ready, what should, should you do? Uh, you should have come to me for coaching. <laughs> <laughs> should you wait outside in the waiting room oh, and let others go never, prior? Yes, never read cold. You know what a cold reading is? It's a, it's a reading that you've worked on at least two days. Uh, Minimum, it, never read a script cold, and yes, make choices, work, look at every line, milk every line for the most, change every line out, and look for your silences or beats. So when an actor comes in the room and it's a cold reading, it's definitely not cold. They should be prepared yes. forwards, backwards, and sideways. What are they going to do with the paper? Should they hold it? Oh, yes, absolutely. In Australia, they memorize everything, apparently, and um, here you have to hold the script like this, and you hold it in front of the person you're work working. Like, for you, I would hold it here. And you hold it up, and you do not flap it down. You do not gesture with it. You do Wildly. not move it. <laughs> exactly. You hold it so it becomes invisible. Then you can gesture with this hand and talk, but you hold it between you and the person. Now, should you be referring to that page? Oh, yes. You, you have to learn to scoop the words up and talk to the person. And do not, this is a technique that you learn. Look in the mirror, read to yourself, see how often your eyes can meet your, how often you can meet your eyes in the mirror and just scoop up the words, scoop up the words, and do not look at the, at the paper when your partner is talking. So, you've got your paper in front of you. I think you're saying that you shouldn't be looking down and grabbing your lines while the other person no, is speaking definitely. to you. Yes. So how do you handle that you, besides being prepared? You have to learn that technique. That is a technique that, that takes a while to learn. And I have students coming to my class who are not perfect and I say you have two weeks, ten minutes every day to read into the mirror and then they're perfect. Yeah. All right. So they say comedy is a lot harder than dying. 
Would you say that's true? Yes. And you talk about comedic up tilt. What does oh, that yeah. mean on the end of a sentence? All right, for, for like, not dark comedy, but for, you know, light, bright comedy, if you say, um, what a pretty shirt, that's not very comedic, but if you say it with a game and an up tilt, what a pretty shirt, you know? This, it just makes you yeah, kind of want to laugh. It's just funnier, and so every line should come up. Um, I don't know how you do that, you know, or just try and get an up tilt, especially the last line of your, of your comedy of the scene, especially up, up tilt, everything up tilt. So let's say you're doing your scene and it's just not funny. Is there a way of saving yourself? Uh, no. <laughs> Basically just kill yourself yes, now? Yes, just kill yourself. Uh, if, you, if it's not funny, then you haven't done the work. So that goes back to yeah. having the technique Having down. the technique, preparation, know what you're doing, have you know, crazy energy, the up tilts, yes, and raise the stakes to the point where you can't believe it, yes. So you teach an acting class. It's ongoing. It's a group of professional working actors. Yes. Now tell us a bit about this class. It's a weekly class. Yes, I, I um, have a, a nice group of students. I mean, I don't take beginners. I used to teach a beginning class, and maybe I will again if I get enough. But I, I like kind of experienced actors. And I have actors who work a lot, like on uh, big shows. And they dip into my class now and then to, because I'm, I can, you know, always have teach them something. And they love the experience because I have wonderful scenes. So... The first thing we do is I give them like a little page of dialogue um, and then all the actors do it and then I say, oh, you're boring me or <laughs> <laughs> um, what about that first line or more to the point, what about your silences? The silences are the most important thing that you can do and you draw them out. The old actor said to the young actor, I can do more with my silences than you can do with your lines and that, that is absolutely true. Um, you, in, a, in a long paragraph, look for your silences. So we work on the scene, we go into every line, I help them, we, we do everything, and then if it's funny, it's gonna get really funny. If it's heartbreaking, it's gonna get really heartbreaking. And then we do improvs, and then we do a third thing, which is I give you a script and you work on it with your partner, and you do a full performance with a script in your hand. So it's three times a, a, a night back with Darren Warren. She is the author of How to Make Your Audience Fall in Love with You, and that's available at barnesandnoble.com and also at many of your local bookstores. And again, one of the finest books to hit this planet in the last 20 years. <laughs> Thank you. And Amazon, too. <laughs> and Amazon.com, which is a global source, and everyone can access this incredible book. So back to your classes. Um, you say that every actor gets the chance to work three times in your class, and you keep you keep the number minimal. I believe about fourteen people. Uh, Sixteen would be my max before I split it up. Yeah. So everyone gets to work three times, and you're breaking it into um, improv and script analysis, cold reading. Tell us a little bit about each one of those things. What do they mean? How does that get you to the final product? The script analysis is the work that all of you should have done on your script, should, should be able to uh, do right away. Know what you're fighting for. Know what the opposite is. For example, if you're doing like, for example, uh, a mother fighting with her daughter about, um, I'm gonna marry this ex-con, and the mother does not like this, all right? So as the mother, don't just fight one way, if the daughter makes a really good point, pause for a minute and think, maybe mom's right. And so that there's variety. So these are the silences you speak of. Um, yeah, that, that is a silence. That could be a silence. Another thing is um, the silence that people don't do. For example, after someone slaps you and your next line is, you bastard. People go, slap, you bastard. No, take the time to realize that you've been slapped. You slap. 
and then you say the line. You see, all mm -hmm. these moments bring the camera into. Another good thing is making discoveries. Darren, I want to ask you one thing before you go okay. on to the discoveries, and this is something that could be a huge embarrassment for many people in an audition. When you need to slap someone, oh, okay. exactly how are you going to slap that person? Okay, well, you're not. Um, so You're not. <laughs> no, not in an audition. You're not. Um, you, what you're going to do is, what I like to do is, is grab a man by his sleeve and ruffle it or hit his arm with his permission before. Or if you're auditioning with a reader, slap the table or something like that. No, that's too much. In or your arm. Yeah. If you're alone and doing a monologue. Then slap the table or if you're re reading with, with someone out there. Yeah. Now, who should you direct your monologue to? Okay, that's a good question. Um, a monologue don't worry about actually seeing the person. We don't care about that or miming everything correctly in an audition. If you're the monologue person should be on stage right or stage left and you refer to them now and then. You don't have to talk to them and stare at them. You talk to them and you make images for them and you and you, you don't have to see them every second. That's that's so, the point. I know you say in your book, and I've seen plenty of very cheesy, cheesy movies, um, you don't want to put the other person, you know, gazing off into the sunset. Oh, I hate that. Okay. <laughs> the, the idea of, you know, the guy standing behind the woman, honey, look, we're going to have this, you know, house I'm going to build for you. And she's looking at the house. There's no house out there. Nothing. No. So this is cr called creating images for your partner. If I'm describing the house, you're going to watch me describe the house. You're not going to see some fake house out there. That's what actors do. Actors drink from bottles, too. Don't do that. And every, <laughs> every major alcoholic probably still uses a glass. Yeah, they do, they do. Uh, Michael Shirtleff used to say, only actors drink out of bottles, no. But or anyway. Or Nicolas Cage in uh, Leaving Las Vegas. Oh, well, but he, if you're uh, absolutely at the bottom, yeah. That, yeah, that, that's, that's one guy in the history of ever. So, now, back to your, your class and the different techniques. So, you're doing your, you're looking over your script and it's, it's a script analysis. You've done that. What is your next step? Well, the next step is um, in your class. Oh, well, then we do the improvs. Is that yes, what you mean? Correct. Okay, we do improvs. And what I look for in an improv is um, I have a story in in the book actually about a scene I did for Michael, and I was screaming and yelling and tears were pouring down my cheeks and I thought I, I'm a genius he's gonna think I'm fabulous right and he said Darren you were all the same level so we tuned out I thought you tuned out of that performance but anyway yeah so what I look for in my improvs is again that wild heart monitor so what you want to do is you want to make events happen you want to say the women are always saying I'm pregnant and it's mm. it stops you want to have those silences where people take in information and you want to make discoveries like, oh, in the moment you make a discovery, the camera draws in. So if you have a line like, um, just a simple line like, you're wearing a white coat. If you say, you're wearing a white coat, fine. But if you go, you're wearing a white coat. And that means maybe you just became a doctor. I don't know. but. Find lines to make discoveries on, and not of, all of them will be obvious, but do it. The camera loves it. So how did it come to pass that um, you got Michael Shirtliff writing a chapter of the book? Oh, Michael is the best. I hope you've all read his book, Audition. Uh, I studied with Michael for seven years. Uh, I used to teach his class when he got sick, and he was a very good personal friend. He was a brilliant man. And, and he, the king of audition yes. books probably for the rest of yes. time and the new queen is actually Darren yes. Warren and you can access information at Darren Warren I'm sorry Darren at sbcglobal.net for her class as well as her book and I hope everyone will take a look at it because hands down it's going to bring you the most you can get for your career and you're watching Actor Z on actorsentertainment.com and we're back with Darren Warren, who is a director, actress, and the writer of the book, How to Make Your Audience Fall in Love with You. 
Now, we left off at um, Michael Shirtliff, you know, the, the reigning king, and sadly now deceased, of um, audition technique in books. You took a class with him. What happened in that class? He was a tough man. He was very tough. And he taught me everything I know. And I decided to stay in his class as tough as he was because I knew that I could learn from him. And what he taught was making those exciting choices. He has the famous 12 guideposts, find the love in the scene, what are you fighting for, um, discoveries, moment before. And um, interesting about the moment before, the moment before should not be like how you're feeling before, what you're doing before. It's the moment before what you're going to go into the scene with. It's it's dragging you like this into the scene, and that's what that's what the moment before is. So people it, misunderstand. Is sometimes. it your stakes? You're yes, it's, it's not what that. No, it's what you're going to do to your partner. I am going to go in and give him a piece of my mind. I'm going to go in and and make him uh, finally say he'll marry me. So what are you fighting yes, for? Yes, and that should drag you into the scene and start you right away. So what about the beats in the scene? Beats are the most important thing that you can do as actors. So you actors should really know what you're doing with beats. And there are more beats than you think. I have, uh, for example, the first time in a love relationship that you say, I love you, this is a huge, huge thing. So have a beat before you say it, leading up to it, and then you say it, and then there's a beat or silence after you say it as you both go, oh my God, look what he said. And then she says it, and then there's another beat. If you don't do all that, if you just say, I love you, oh, I love you too, it has no high stakes. So you're, you're building tension for yeah, the scene. Exactly. And you're, you're giving them a reason to watch. Yeah, exactly. So you're in this class with Michael Shirtliff. You're quaking in the back, <laughs> just a little bit terrified because he is known or was known for being a very, very harsh critic, but a great teacher. How did it come to pass that you started teaching this class? I just get would, up one day and... I would never have ever dreamed I would do that. I actually didn't even do a scene for Michael. I was too scared. And he finally said, Darren, are you actually going to act in this class, you're just going to sit there and watch. And I thought, I think I'll just sit here and watch. But <laughs> So I finally did a scene and he liked it. And uh, he said I was powerful. And I was so thrilled that that made me relax. And I loved his class. And then I just took it, actually it, I, it took me seven years until I felt really confident, until I felt that I knew what he might be going to say. And then he trusted me enough to teach his class when he got sick, yeah. So classes can be really intimidating for actors, especially if they're in the yes. presence of people that work all the time. You may be a sensational performer. How do you keep your, your actors confident and grounded in your class so they don't absolutely shrink away in the back like a wallflower? You know, that's a, it's an interesting question because I used to just tell them the bad part. And as a teacher, you have to learn that you have to tell them what's good. Oh, this reminds me, if you are in, if you're being directed by a professional director and he doesn't say much to you, but he's saying a lot to your partner, that's actually a compliment. So don't worry about it. Um, it means they think you're doing a good job. So I would think, okay, the actors know I think they're doing a good job. Let me just help them with the bad stuff. And that doesn't work. So you have to you have to tell them what they're doing right and wrong. So you need to build them up yeah. before you essentially knock them back yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you also talk about line readings when someone just isn't getting it. Are they really supposed to just take it as a line reading? Or Okay, so I am a film director, theater director, and I know, and I'm an acting teacher, and I know you're not supposed to give line readings. But sometimes you don't have a lot of time. But you know what? Sometimes you just do it. And if you get a line reading from a director, don't imitate the director. Realize what the director's, what the action of what the director's trying to say. And then change it out of your eyes. I always think acting should be out of your eyes. I'm very big on you not being a character, but you being yourself in the situation. You without a leg. You, uh, you know, uh, suddenly blind or whatever. 
it has to come out of your eyes or we won't believe you. So you're essentially playing yourself all the time with whatever impairment that the character has. Yeah, but I don't like character. I like you in the situation. I like it to be you, and I, I always have my students say, I, I, not he or she, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have the fantastic Darren Warren. You can reach Darren at darren at sbcglobal.net. Thank you all for joining us on Actors E Chat Show. And